अनुसंधान ऑल गुजरात इंटीग्रेटेड क्लासरूम सैटेलाइट ना माध्यम थी जोड़ती कड़ी एटले संधान हेलो फ्रेंड्स टुडे आई एम गोइंग टू डिस्कस वन ऑफ द मोस्ट इन्फ्लुएंशियल टेक्स्ट्स ऑफ अर्ली नाइनटीन सेंचुरी और लेट मी से अर्ली एटीन सेंचुरी बिकॉज द पोएम वाज रिटर्न इन सेवनटीन नाइन्टी वन ऑफ द मोस्ट इन्फ्लुएंशियल बिकॉज ऑफ टू और थ्री रीजन्स दैट आई विल काउंट लेटर ऑन बट द वर्क इज राइम ऑफ द एंशियन मैरिनर रिटर्न बाय वन ऑफ द रोमांटिक्स Samuel Taylor Coleridge why is it so important why is it so influential there were two or three reasons first of all the poem was written in 1798 it was the period when french revolution had already taken place neo classicism was gradually collapsing and at this stage transitional poets had already marked their presence very potently and very impressively during this period rhyme of ancient mariner was written so before i start with the introduction of the poem let us have some facts about this poem yeah so the poem was first published in uh, 1798 in a volume that was called lyrical ballads coleridge had written this poem and it is assumed or some critics believe that this poem was very much inspired by two works which coleridge was uh, somehow uh, referring to during his period so the one work was second voyage of exploration that was written in 1772 to 75 by james cook and a voyage around the world by way of the great south sea 1726 by captain george shelvoski now this the second work was perhaps mentioned by dorothy that words were dorothy and coleridge were on a trip and that time they were discussing about some mariner who had killed an albatross and there they got this kind of theme that yeah something can be written about this so as to impart some kind of moral some kind of message which is very important especially in the case of post french revolution stage before we proceed with the book let us have some facts about lyrical ballads in which this particular poem was published because it is very important to mention uh the lyrical ballads and uh, its relation with the poem itself so lyrical ballad was a joint venture of coleridge and wordsworth these two uh, great personalities of romantic age were close friends also and they had some kind of uh, inclination towards a new form of poetry which they were very much striving for for a long time so this can be marked as the beginning of the a new era as i will mention later on there was something strange about the title first of all lyrical ballads it was so controversial because of its paradoxical nature people the critics believe how is it possible that a ballad can be lyrical because lyric has a different characteristic and ballad has a different characteristic ballad is something when you have uh, it it refers to a kind of traditional not only traditionalism but about something which is related to the past to the medieval age it has a very separate structure it is sung with the uh, instrument like lyre etc while lyric on the other hand used to be a very small poem with a single theme very soft theme completely opposite to that of the structure of ballad so when the title was kept like lyrical ballad it definitely uh, stirred the controversies in and the time of england and that was the reason that lyrical ballads got at once a hype in that particular literary arena it marked the beginning of a new era also 
there were total 23 poems in this lyrical ballad in this volume and this 23 poems were included in the first edition of lyrical ballads in 1798 so four poems out of this 23 were contributed by Coleridge and of course one of the most important poems was the rhyme of ancient mariner not only this but also as soon as this particular lyrical ballad was published it marked the beginning of a new movement so far we had a long era of neoclassicists including alexander pope and other representatives now it was time to mark a complete breakup from its previous era in fact it was a reaction to the previous era so called uh, pseudo classicism and marked a new beginning, a new era that was called Romantic Age. Of course, Romantic Age is considered or the beginning of the Romantic Age is considered with the publication of lyrical ballads. So from this point of view also we can understand the importance of this volume and uh, the other poems which were included in lyrical ballads. When lyrical ballad was written, Wordsworth and Coleridge had certain philosophy which they wanted to propagate in this work. So Coleridge in his work Biographia Literaria mentioned in a very depth analysis. He stated why actually this lyrical ballads was written. Earlier it was mentioned by Wordsworth also and later on it was clarified by Coleridge in his Biographia Literaria. So what he believed that it was agreed that my endeavors should be directed to persons and characters supernatural or at least romantic yet so as to transfer from our inward nature a human interest and a semblance of truth sufficient to procure for these shadows of imagination that willing suspension of disbelief for the moment which constitutes poetic faith. Coleridge brought the concept of willing suspension of disbelief. Wordsworth and Coleridge, the new thing which was very much important in the context of lyrical ballad was that they completely broke away with the previous tradition of the urban society. They were looking forward to having some kind of harmony with nature, harmony with the human beings rather than the urban society. As Pope earlier stated in his essay on men, presume not God to scan, the proper study of mankind is men. So, here it is very important what, what Coleridge was thinking in this context. He said that both Wordsworth and Coleridge had some kind of philosophy about this. Coleridge was saying that let me pick some supernatural things and transform them so as to seem in a natural manner. And therefore, he was attracted more towards supernatural things. Supernatural things can bring willing suspension of disbelief because the way the incidents were going to be represented or projected, they, they allowed readers to think in a, in a kind of uh, non-scientific manner, in a kind of belief tradition. Even because they don't believe that something supernatural does exist, they had some kind of premonition that let us accept for a while because this is a taste of poetry and it continued the tradition of poetic faith. In that manner, Coleridge's contribution was very significant. Then he says, Mr. Wordsworth, on the other hand, was to propose to himself as his object to give the charm of novelty to things of every day and to excite a feeling, feeling analogous to the supernatural by awakening the mind's attention from the lethargy of custom and directing it to the loveliness and the wonders of the world before us. So what he wanted to say was that he wanted to pick some natural things from the nature and then transform it into supernatural way so that there could be a proper relationship between nature and culture also the 
the Coleridge belief can be sustained and a new tradition can be uh, maintained in this entire process. So Wordsworth and Coleridge were basically contributing to establish a new era, new movement and new philosophy of writing poetry. Whereas Wordsworth was thinking that uh, let's have the, the theme of poetry from common men, uh, common men in the common language, simple language, while Coleridge had a very different kind of attitude. He wanted to show something supernatural so as to uh, flow the tradition of willing suspension of disbelief. Such was the background of lyrical ballads and with this objective, these 23 poems were contributed. And one of the poems of these 23 was the rhyme of the ancient mariner. Yeah, there was some suggestion from Wordsworth also about the structure of the poem, but it was totally Coleridge's own poem. One more fact about this poem, which I would like to bring to your notice is, Coleridge had written uh, three very representative romantic poems, which are considered the most powerful. One is, of course, Rhyme of Ancient Mariner. The other two are Christabel and Frost at Midnight. Frost at Midnight has a different theme, but when it comes to Christabel as well as Kubla Khan, they belong to the same tradition of uh, uh, willing suspension of disbelief kind of uh, tradition. So Christabel and Kubla Khan are considered incomplete poems. Even though they are supremely good, they have the best of the structure, they have the uh, best theme also, but they were not considered to be complete poems. While Rhyme of the Ancient Manor is the only major work which is complete in its own. And therefore, this poem has lots of angles which can be analyzed to see Coleridge's view of life. Now, when, this, when we come to this poem, Rhyme of Ancient Mariner, even before we begin with the analysis of the poem, let us have the setting of this poem. How this poem starts, what is the background of the poem, and how it contributes to the entire development of the text. So, um, as soon as the poem begins, it, it has a very typical ballad tradition which is followed by this poem also as this poem is in the form of traditional ballad it opens abruptly without any systematic introduction it has something to show and the poem begins with it is an ancient mariner and he stoppeth one of three by thy long gray beard and glittering eye now wherefore stoppest thou me this is how the poem begins now Two things are very, very important in this context. One is the word, the adjective that is ancient. When we use this ancient in the routine manner, it, it belongs to some the oldest time, which is no more into existence, which is no more into vogue. And therefore you call it uh, ancient. So the mariner who is standing before the person, before the guests, is living of course he is a human being who is existing on the earth and yet he is announced as ancient so that is the first thing about this poem when it begins the ancient word is very very mysterious and he stoppeth one of three and who are those three people the this question at once arises in our mind maybe some uh, Later on, the context is given that, yes, these are three wedding guests who are going to attend one function. And he stopped with not all three, but one of those three persons. The, the reason can be anything why one person is stopped out of three, why one person is selected. But that is a matter of discussion. We will go into detail later on. The another important fact about this line is the long grey beard and glittering eye. Now wherefore stoppest thou me? So now the angle changes and the perspective is delivered from uh, the guest's point of view who observes the ancient mariner as grey beard and glittering eye. If, if you can see the image here, 
says it all the gray beard and the glittering eye this gray beard is fine because he's an old man but glittering eye has some kind of mysterious involvement in this which is necessary to be seen um wedding guest thinks that this man can be a ghost can be a supernatural agency can be something which does not belong to this world and still it is there so this is how the poem begins in the most abrupt and uh, mysterious manner and that is the beauty of the poem on the other hand now another important thing the the description of ancient mariner continues it says he holds him with his skinny hand now the third uh, you see the description level in the previous slide you have the gray beard and then glittering eye and now there is a skinny hands so all this description suggests that this mariner is not a usual human being who can be taken for granted who can be taken for conversation no he is something else he he may be the ghost he may be something demon or uh, someone who is coming on the way of attending his wedding function so with his skinny hands instead of answering this question he starts his tale abruptly he says there was a sheep caught he hold off unhand me gray beard loom so you see that this particular stanza has lot of things involved in it mariner starts his tale at once without any introduction the wedding guest is not ready to understand this he says that you just hold me off i don't want to listen to your story you just let me go you gray beard loon you unhand me because i'm not i'm not going to be carried by you absun his hand dropped he now there are two uh, one more observation which is important absun is archaic usage of the word this poem carries the tradition of many archaic words like kirk or absun these are the words which are no more in the